Pregames.com. NBA season is upon us, and there's always some overrated teams, always some underrated teams. I'm looking at a couple overrated teams, teams that maybe you're going to find some value betting against. Let's go first to Chuck Edel. Chuck. You know, my overrated team here is, is Miami here, and, you know, they're coming off the championship. I really feel like that was their goal. They, now that they got that, that championship, I don't see the hunger there. In fact, I hear a, a lot of bickering already. Wade say, saying some things, you know, going back and forth. They got Ray Allen in the offseason. You know, I'm not sure that's going to be a big production out of him, you know, aging Ray Allen there. Uh, the, not a big fan of the coach. Now, in, in, in this situation, I think it's going to be harder than ever to motivate these guys during the season. This might be a team, you know, like an old Celtics team. They might pick it up playoff time. I'm not going to count them out playoff time. But during the season, I think you're going to get some good value. Uh, I think their number is going to be a little bit inflated. I don't see them given that, you know, that full-out quite effort, that hunger isn't quite there. And a little bit maybe a, a, chemi- a lack of chemistry here where we're seeing some They don't have on. anything to prove during the regular season now. They got their rings. I agree. Their uh, season win total was at 61. So, uh, Boy, that's, they only play 82 that's a lot games, of wins. Right? That's they a lot of changed, wins, right? It's only 82 games. And still? I think you take a dollar 65 right around there, maybe dollar 60 to win the NBA. So, you know, obviously some very high hopes for a team that does have talent and is the defending champion. But a lot of times you find value betting against those kind of teams. We know what they are. They can't be much better than what we think they are. Right. So. And, I, and I'm not going to fade in playoff time. I'm talking about the regular course. season. Exactly. I think you're going to be some really good spots. You know, you know, we, when they play the elite teams, maybe stay away. But, you know, you're going to get them laying a big number against the uh, you know, New Orleans or something. You know, there's going to be some good spots going against them. They are. I'm going to stay on that train of thought. And what I always say, simply put, the spread is the great equalizer in sports. You could give me the worst team, and with enough points, I'll take them over to best team in any sport. So with the spread being the great equalizer, I'm going to have to go with the L.A. Lakers as being overvalued. I mean, they are the talk of the NBA. I, uh, look what they did. They picked up Steve Nash. That wasn't enough. They picked up Dwight Howard, who is the highest you know, free agent there was. They have talked about him the entire last season whether he's going to stay in Orlando, go. And all of a sudden, he's in L.A., of all places, in L.A. And, and you look at that team, you got Kobe, you got Gasol, you got Jameson, you got Meeks, you got World Peace, you got Duhon. This team looks like an all-star team. And yet, when a team's overvalued, you're not going to make any money betting them. Maybe you could make some money betting them on a future to win the NBA championship. If you want to just lay it like that and hold the ticket for that small of a return, I'm just saying, or season win totals, but usually you're not going to get value there no. either. But I don't think you're going to get value game by game. I'm not high on Mike Brown as a coach. I wasn't high on him at Cleveland. He had talent there with LeBron, who more or less coached the team. And we've seen that in L.A. He's not a coach that wins games, you know. And at the end of the day, chemistry, there's nothing bigger in the NBA. It's a fast game. I mean, it's it's a game of speed, and you need to develop chemistry. And I don't care how many All Stars you have, until they develop chemistry, they may not win as many games as you think they will. And like with the spread being the great equalizer, look to fade the Lakers early on in the season. Bet against them more than you bet on them, and you'll come out ahead. Their season win total, by the way, is 57 and a half. You could take anywhere from about a dollar 80 to two dollars for them to win the NBA. Not much value there. I and mean, we've got a long way to go. You have to hope no, injury no injuries, no aging stars. I mean, between Nash and Kobe, both on the wrong side of 35. Is Kobe 35? Yeah, is right around. Something. And then, you know, Kobe's kind of been putting the whole team on his back. You know, all of a sudden, these new guys, I, I think I, you hit it on the head with the chemistry. I, I think fading them the first half of the year, uh, it, you know, could be a, a good spot here. I think uh, until they get adjusted and you, you know, follow the games, watch them, we'll know when it looks like they're kicking gear. But I think it's going to be a while before they get things going. I'm going in a little bit further down the ladder, but a team that was pretty good last year, I'm going with the uh, Indiana Pacers. Their season win total is 51. Now, if you look at that, team 
they did nothing in the offseason to improve themselves. I think they were an overachieving team last year. For which, sure. hey, I, you know, I give them credit for that. I think that's great. But you look down their lineup, they got, uh, you know, Granger, they got Hill, they got uh, Hibbert. Hibbert, they got West. I mean, some nice players. You got Hansborough coming off the bench. But as I said, they did nothing to improve themselves. They were 4-1 and one in overtime games last year. They played hard is what it was, I well, they, think. They played hard. And then they had a couple of streaks. They were very streaky. They had a five-game losing streak and a four-game losing streak. That's not outrageous. But if you look at those streaks, it's when they went on the road to play tough opponents. So I think that's right there that – yeah, they They're hustle. They're not an elite team. They're not an elite team. And I think right now, if you look at a 51 win total, you're putting them, uh, you know, I mean, 59 and a half is Oklahoma City, and eight and a half wins is an awful lot. Denver's 51 and a half, and I think Denver's going to be very good this year. You know, so they're right up there uh, in the in the certainly in the top half of the league, the top quarter of the league. I don't think they're going to be that good. I think they come back down to earth a little bit. And I also think that's the kind of team, come playoff time, you really want to bet against because it really does come down. The matchups in the playoffs. Listen, you got a seven game series. My guy has to beat your guy. I mean, that's as simple as that. And I don't think they have that many of those guys that can do that. I was, was going to say, you know, Granger, a key component there for Indiana. When he missed games, and this is yeah. a guy who, was, who misses a lot of games yeah, during yeah, the season. Yeah, he doesn't stay healthy. Yeah, doesn't stay healthy. I didn't have that in all the streaks. So that, that may have been but, part. Yeah, but you know, when he misses, I mean, the team really, really lacks that offensive power. When he's out of the lineup, uh, they, they really struggle. And this is a guy who just doesn't stay healthy. Very good. Well, it's, it's coming, baby. Okay. It's well, coming. The NBA you, is, is upon us. Well, you heard our opinions on a couple of overrated teams and look for some value betting against those at least early in the season. Mike.